I live in Yonkers and have for the past 30 or some odd years, and Untermeyer Park was not any place you went to. It wasn't really a destination. But clearly, once you get here, you realize it's spectacular in every way. There was an interest in making sure not only that we maintain the history and, and the ambiance, but we also make it better. And we make sure that people don't just drive by the fences, but find that there's a reason to come in and there's a reason to create wonderful memories and joyous occasions. So I'm really happy that I'm here and I can't wait to come back and continue to see it flourish. Just as Central Park Conservancy in New York City helped restore America's greatest park, the Uncomar Gardens Conservancy, uh, with your help, will help restore America's greatest garden. It started about three years ago when someone said you should go see the garden again. They've turned the fountains on. And I had never seen the fountains working for many, many, many years. And it just blew me away when I saw the fountains going. And I knew about the gardens, but there was so much I didn't know about the gardens. And I decided I was going to become the chairman of this conservancy. And we've gotten tremendous support, tremendous publicity, and great enthusiasm for this project. We've had a lot of the Salzberger family that owns the New York Times, a lot of whom were friends of the Untermeyer family going back 100 years ago. So it's sort of like a family reunion for a lot of very prominent New Yorkers. Mr. Untermeyer and my grandfather were friends. My grandfather was Adolf Ox, who was the publisher of the New York Times. This was all Mr. Untermeyer's property. And he had many greenhouses. I can't remember how many. But I do know that he wanted his garden to be better than Mr. Rockefeller's. But it's beautiful. It's incredible. But as a 10-year-old, it was more fun biking than admiring. I discovered the park about seven years ago and I was driving up. I saw the brass plaque about Samuel Untermeyer and I saw the, the crenellated wall and I was curious what it was. And I had to stop here to see what this place was. So I walked up to the gate, which was locked, and I was just blown away by this building. The walled garden, I think, is a very unique part of the garden. And, and uh, the, there's two uh, primary uh, columns. They were imported here, and they're ancient Roman columns. Probably the only two sets of stones out of one piece of marble. Our big project next spring is to erect a, a deer fence a mile long around the project, and we have raised almost all the money for it. And once we have a deer fence, then we can begin to restore other elements of the garden. And there's something called the Temple of Love over to the south from here, which is this an unbelievably romantic dramatic, rustic confection that has limitless potential for waterfalls and watercourses. So that is our next big project. The weather was beautiful, a huge crowd, very enthusiastic, and it had as its culmination the setting sun. And then it brought us here to the Temple of the Sky, and we had the great uh, toast and the bonfire which we lit. And uh, I'm going to have a very nice sleep tonight, I think. I think it's inspiring for people to be willing to take on a long-term project that might not even be completed in their own lifetimes, to realize that that's part of our responsibility as well for future generations. And I think the time is ripe for this to be restored as a symbol of, like Steve was saying, harmony among people, brotherly love, peace, and in the times that we're living in, we need this sort of inspiration. If we just focus on what's What's quick and easy and flashy and new, we're going to lose a lot of the treasures like this. It's one of our, our services to society to preserve the things that are worth preserving. I'm excited that this is happening.